Now, is this a van typical of what you would find in New Zealand? Yeah, so this is definitely more budget friendly. Um, I paid around four grand New Zealand. It's a 95 Nissan Serena. Everyone, welcome back to my next video. In today's uh, video, we have a real treat. My One of my oldest and best friends in the Nomad Life is going to present today, my friend Brian. And uh, I think you're going to really enjoy the video. Now, I know from uh, past videos that a lot of you are out there wondering, oh, what's going on, Bob? Are, are you quitting? Are you sick? Are you dying? And my answer is to that is no such luck on your part. I am like a toe fungus. You cannot get rid of me that easily. I am here for the long haul. Until I draw my last breath, and with a little luck, I'll have, a, I'll have my cell phone out watching my last breath, taking a video, hoping I can finally go viral. Everyone will see Bob dying. There'll either be celebration in the streets or howling in the streets. We'll see what it, how it turns out. But at any rate, I am not going anywhere. However, uh, I'm older. I'm tired her. Uh, not the best English, but very accurate. And I would like to do less. And so my goal is to do less and less on the channel. And so I have been thinking about how to do that for years, actually, now. Another question you're probably going to have is why Brian? Uh, well, literally, Brian is one of my oldest and best friends in the nomadic life. I've known Brian for 11 years now. It's still early on, and I think I think it's going so well that in the long run, Brian will be taking over as co-partner with me in the channel, and you'll see more and more of him. Again, I'm never leaving. He's going to be a part, but I will be a part too. But I know Brian's heart, and Brian's heart is uh, to love and care about people. That will always be the primary thrust of this channel. How can I help the nomad community? How can I help the individual who's suffering and needs hope? This channel is about offering hope. So I think the channel will change. It will be different, but its heart of caring and compassion will always be there. And let me tell you why I'm convinced that's true. When we started Homes on Wheels Alliance three years ago, uh, we needed board members. So when I thought about who would be on the board of trustees, Brian was the very first person I thought of. And he is now still on the board. He is the treasurer of the board. He contributes his whole life and heart and soul to helping others through Hawa. The heart and soul of Chief RV Living will not change. Brian's heart is to care and help people, to give hope, to give a way forward. That will never change on Chief RV Living. In fact, I believe it will be enhanced by Brian being a part. I hope you will welcome him in and see that this is a step forward and not in any way, shape, or form a step backwards or even a step sideways. This is an improvement. We'll find out together. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cheap RV Living. Uh, in the last video, we got a chance to speak with Vanessa and listen to all about her New Zealand travels and how she went over and uh, bought her van and so forth. In this video, we're going to take a look at her van and see what she lived in for that year. So, Vanessa, how's it going today? Good, good. I'm doing great. Excellent. The sun's coming out, so this is a perfect right. day for a tour. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, switch it around, and we'll take a quick tour of your van. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, hey folks, now let's uh, have a tour of the little Shelly van. Um, so as you can see in New Zealand, we drive on the opposite side of the vehicle, which is also so extra fun when you're driving a manual. <laughs> yes, I can see the problems there. Yeah, I would have such a hard time with that. Um, but I, I did, what I did do though, is I installed my own Bluetooth radio so that I can actually listen to my own tunes. Very nice. While, while traveling around. Um, cool. So this is the back of the van. So this is a bit different than what I'm used to. 
um, okay. in terms of like in in Chester, the other man, um, everything was inside um, and it was just easier to deal with. This I kind of, um, so I did buy this van pre-built, um, but I, it was a little bit too basic for me. So I kind of built out this back section here. A okay. little bit on the cheaps, but you know, it works. Okay. Um, but it did come with the, it did come with the tanks here. Um, you know, one of those water. Yeah, so one's fresh water and one's um, gray water. Okay. Um, but they, these were the ones that they came with, and like I don't think that they were like, um, like they weren't BPA free and stuff like that. So I'd never used it for my drinking water. It was just more for like, wash, like washing dishes or maybe a shower. Okay. And how uh, does the water get pumped up from the the left one up to the sink? Is there like a hand pump or electric pump? Uh, there's an electric pump that I hooked up to the house battery, but it has like a, like just a regular like cigarette lighter plug. So it's like oh. really easy to just plug into, like you don't have to have a house battery for that. Oh, okay. Um, but it, the pump is inside here. And then this little guy is the, oh, sorry. <laughs> this little guy is the little shower thing. So if you buy them like pre-built, sometimes they'll give you like these small little, um, like stoves that you have to buy the canisters for. Okay. But I I freaking hate them. <laughs> I hate okay. having to buy the canisters. It feels very wasteful. So what I did was I bought an LPG tank. It's not oh, propane nice. here. It's LPG. Oh, all right. Um, so I bought one of these and then I just like unhook it and stuff when I'm driving. But then I can hook it back up and then I just bought myself a little, um, little wow. cast iron stove that I... I um I usually like will fasten it down so it doesn't move. Okay. Um, so I built some shelves on the back as well, just so that I could keep all my like dried goods, um, like all my food and like any little extras that I want to do. My dishes would go kind of in this shelf here. So my electrical system, I bought um an extra battery for the house battery so that I wasn't using like tying anything into the starter or the starter battery. Okay. Um, so what I did was I kind of did this setup right under the bed here where you can see the batteries underneath here. It's just kind of like fastened to the, to the bed. Okay. Basically. Um, it's a hundred amp hour battery, I think, which was a little bit overkill for what I needed, but I thought I might need to use it. So you could probably okay. just get something smaller. Um, and then I bought an inverter. Um, um, and then this is my voltage sensitive relay. Okay. And then and I have fuse? um, fuses on either side. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. And you put that in yourself or was that already built in? No, I, I put this in myself. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah. The, the van I bought didn't really, it was like super basic. Didn't have really anything except for the bed. Um, and then like a, like a little table thing, which I could kind of show now. Okay. Um, and so I kind of modified it a bit just to kind of work for what I needed. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I had, I still had some money in my budget to buy these extra things. So I bought the battery, bought the wiring and the, the relay. Um, and it works. I didn't, I thought about getting solar, but it, cause it is quite sunny here, but, um, it just didn't really, I didn't really need it. Okay. Yeah, because if you're uh, driving every day, that makes sense. You don't really have to have that. Yeah, I was just driving. Like, I knew I was driving every day or almost every day. So it was just easier for me to use the voltage-sensitive relay. Um, okay. And then, and then just charge it up that way. The other thing, let me move this down, was this was my very cheapy makeshift way of checking the voltage. Oh, nice. Be a little bit low, but um, all it is is... It's basically this, this, um, like you can buy this for a vehicle. This is just a cigarette lighter, Yep. but it has like the voltage of the battery and then it has just all these extra plugs and stuff. Oh, so nice. I would like just plug in my phone and everything through here. Um, this is like how I really like just kind of made sure that my vet battery was topped up fine. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. And that's a, that's a cheap, easy way of doing it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just really low budget, like gets gets the bare bones of what you need um yeah so then this is my sleeping area which is pretty much just the full back of the van because it's quite a, quite a small little number um when i bought the the um the van 
the setup that they had, it's quite common to just have the bed that comes all the way out to the edge, basically. So it just fills up the whole back. Um, it is cut down the middle, so you can actually like, like push push it in and sort of do like sort of a futon style. Oh, okay. Um, but it was just kind of it was just real janky, and so I ended up just making it so that it just stayed down all the time. Okay. Um, but what I did do is I cut off part of the bed so that I could actually have like space for my legs here so that I can actually like sit up because I'm, I'm small enough to actually sit up in this. <laughs> and so, yeah, that made things like way easier. But underneath there's like heaps of storage space. Um, oh, nice. Brian, you probably remember this quite like my other van. I installed a safe because I, yeah, I yeah. travel around with um, with my laptop because I, I usually work as like a um, a web developer, like this is a contracting web developer. So I took my laptop with me. So this was like, if I was tramping for three or four days and I wanted to leave my stuff in the van, um, I'd have this little safe. So it's bolted to the frame. Nice. So it's, it's just a little number, number key one. It was like a cheap little one. I just bought the, the, like the one that would basically fit my laptop. Okay. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, it's also got a little key thing as well if the battery dies on it. Um, so you can still get into it with a key, but it's okay. just a little number pad. And it's just enough like to open and like it doesn't open all the way, obviously, because of the bed frame. Uh huh. But it's just enough to where I can actually like get stuff in and out quite easily. Nice. Okay. No, that's a really cool idea. I like that. Yeah. And then as you can see back here, this is the toilet. <laughs> yeah. So how do you use that from there? I don't use this. I have not used this once. <laughs> um, this whole little shelf space here. Um, yeah, I just built that out of some like spare wood and stuff that I had. Oh, nice. Or found. <laughs> okay. Found rather. Now, is this a van typical of what you would find in New Zealand? Yeah, so this is definitely more budget friendly. This is on the smaller end. Um, I, I paid around four grand New Zealand um, mm -hmm. for this. Um, but there's definitely bigger ones that you can get like a Toyota, Toyota highest is like probably a quite common one. And that's like, you can get them like mid top or high top. Um, so you can actually like stand up in those ones and there's way more room and space in them. Okay. Um, the bed doesn't take over the whole back. You can actually have like a nice, maybe more of a setup, like, um, my old van. Okay. You could do something like that. Um, but they just kind of range, like a lot of them will have high Ks. So it'd be quite tough to find one that's, that doesn't have a lot of Ks. Okay. Um, some will charge you, try to charge you way more because they've built it out really nice, which is great. Um, but if that, if you just kind of want something to get you from point A to point B, like, yeah, you can find something that's a little bit less built out. And just for our uh, our, our non-metric users uh, watching this video, uh, a lot of Ks would be a lot of miles, right? Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> yes, okay. a lot of no, Ks. That's, that's your lingo, miles. not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I've just, you know, I've gotten well immersed. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. It sounds great. So it's just, in, you know, really the world should go to just a metric anyway. So maybe this will be that inspiration. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, now, is that how? Do you have any idea how many feet or meters uh, your van is, or what you compare it to? It like a is it compared to like a minivan in the U.S.? Yeah, I would say it's probably like a, a minivan, maybe like maybe okay. a little bit bigger because it's like a bit bigger in the back. Okay. Um, but about that size, it just kind of looks like a little bit bigger than a minivan. Okay. And what year is your vehicle? Uh, this one's a '95. A 95 and uh, say the name of it again. It's a Toyota. Oh, I don't know if I've ever actually said that what it was. Um, oh. It's a 95 Nissan Serena. Nissan Serena. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And these ones um, aren't quite as common on the road these days, but um, this one just happened to be like really well taken care of. Um, okay. The other cool thing though, is that because there's not as many up on the road, there's like keeps in the, um, like the, uh, oh, what are they called? Scrap yards? Scrap yeah. Yard? Yeah. Okay. Scrap yard. So like I've had to replace like somebody, like uh, somebody busted one of my headlights at one point and it was going to be, cause it's kind of an older model. It's like 
buying that brand new is quite pricey but mm -hmm. going to the junkyards you can always find these vans so that was okay. that's another thing to think about <laughs> okay no that's good to know so now how many k's did your van have on it when you bought it or how many does it have on it now i have two hundred and seventy-five thousand k's on it now i think when okay. i bought it i had around 200 k's 200 000. Okay. 200 cool. days. okay i think yeah she's a, she's a, she's a she's a good little beast i still take her out from time to time that's excellent thank you so much vanessa for showing us your van and showing what it was like to live in it for a year and traveling around in it uh it's really cool just to see your setup and how, and how you did it thank you so much yeah no worries thanks for coming on the tour with me and yeah having a look at <laughs> some inside exclusive on how I traveled around New Zealand. Excellent. Excellent. And oh, do you have a name for your van, by the way? Oh, this one's called Shelly because the Shelly. first beach I took her to was called Shelly Beach. Oh, so nice. Her name's the Shelly. Oh, very <laughs> nice. All right. Very cool. Well, thank you again for showing us Shelly. We really appreciate you taking the time and the energy to, to show us everything about it. Uh, folks out there, we hope that you enjoyed these videos that we presented to you, uh, sharing our time with Vanessa. And let us know what do you what do you think about her van setup? What do you think of traveling in New Zealand in something you know this size? And do you have any? Have you traveled in there before? What do you What do you think? So please let us know in the comments. Uh, we would love to hear them. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give us that thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.